everyone, thanks for joining me for another Cricut tutorial. Today I'm excited to share with you these headband hair bows that I made for my granddaughter Evie. I posted these last week on Facebook and had just a ton of responses and questions asking how I did this and did I use the Cricut Explorer. You can make these using the Cricut Explorer, it doesn't matter which Explorer machine you have. These are made out of felt and I did cut the felt with the Cricut Explorer. And the fun thing about these bows is that you could use them to put on barrettes, you could use them to put on ponytails. So there's all kinds of things you could make with these cute hair bows, even for you planner girls, you can put them on paper clips. So let's jump over to my craft table and we'll get started putting together these hair bows. Okay, so here we are. I have a piece of felt and this is just a piece I cut off of a full piece. This is just plain old felt. I got it, I think it was 49 cents at Joann's. The brand is Echo Fi classic felt. It's a nine by 12 piece. I just cut off enough for my bow. I have my glue gun heating up. I have my iron heating up on medium heat, no steam. I have a acrylic block here. You can use a brayer, um, just about anything. I'm just going to use that to smooth this down on my mat. So you can use about anything for that. I have Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. This is made by Thermoweb. I prefer this one. You can use any kind of fabric bonding agent, but this is the one that I used and the only one I've tried, so I'm not sure how the others would work. This one says no so permanent adhesive. This is also available at any of your craft stores, Walmart, wherever. And this is uh, it's one yard, 17 inches by one yard. I also have my spatula. You're going to want a spatula or something to get the felt off of your mat. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open up your heat and bun. And again, get your iron preheating a medium heat, no steam. And you can also do this with a heat press, which is how I've been doing it. But I thought for the sake of the video, I would show you how to do it with the iron. So you're going to cut your heat and bond just slightly smaller than your felt piece. And there's nothing magical about this, just lay it out and cut it. And you can see I've previously used this one, so set that aside. You're going to place your felt, and I don't think there's a right or a wrong side, you're going to place that down and place your heat and bond down with the paper side up. This is kind of a shiny, uh, this is actually adhesive that's going to melt into the felt. So you want that down against the felt. And then you're going to take your heated up iron and you're going to place it on. And I believe you're just going to hold it firmly for, I believe the direction says, press and hold for eight sections, eight seconds on each section. So you're just going to move it and heat it and move it and heat Okay, after you're done, and I actually just heated mine on my heat press for about five seconds at 305. So whether you do it with the iron or the heat press, it doesn't matter. It's the same, same result. So then it's going to be stuck to your felt and you're going to take the paper and it just peels right off. Just like that. You just, you don't need that, you can remove it. And then what I like to do is just trim around that edge just so that I don't accidentally cut where there isn't the backing on it. So just clean that edge. And I'm not gonna worry about the bottom there. Okay, so now we have our felt with the, the backing on it. And then this is the outside. So we need our Cricut mat and we are going to put this on the mat with the felt side up, the shiny adhesive side down. Felt side up, adhesive side against the mat. And we're going to put that on our mat and you want a fairly sticky mat and that's why I have my acrylic block. I just want to make sure this is stuck down really well. So I'm just going to press that in to the mat nice nice and stuck down so there's no air bubbles in there or anywhere for the felt to get caught. 
Now I'm going to put the deep blade into my Cricut and jump over to design space and I'll meet you over there. Okay, so here we are in design space and you have a couple options. If you want to use the SVG that I provided, I'll walk you through that. But I just wanted to let you know, if you just go to insert images and up here in the search bar, click bow. There are lots of bows here in design space that you could also use and make different variations. So feel free to use those if you want. But I'm going to use the SVG that I have provided. It's in the comments below this video. You can download it from my Dropbox. And we're just going to click on Upload Image, Browse. And you're going to navigate to where you saved the hair bow SVG file. Click on it and click Open. Here you can tag it and I'm going to tag it bow, ribbon, hair. I think that's good enough. And click Save. It'll be the first item right here in your uploaded images library. We're going to click insert images. Okay, this comes in rather large. You can make this any size you want. I am making these for my granddaughter who's only four months old. So I don't want a very big bow. I want that to be rather small. So while this is all still selected and grouped together, we're going to go over here in the edit panel. And if you don't see the edit panel, you just click right here where it says edit in the upper right corner. And then we're going to highlight the width. Make sure this lock is in the lock position, just like this. And on that width, I'm going to type mine at four inches. Again, if you want a larger bow, go with a higher number. If you want a smaller bow, go with a smaller number. But for Evie, we like this size and this is four inches wide for this longest piece right here. The other thing I want to do is while these are all selected is I'm going to right click and attach. And what this is going to do is keep all these pieces in this position when we send them to the mat. So let's click go. Okay, here it is on the mat. You can put this anywhere on the mat you want. I am just going to pull it away from the corner just a little bit, just because I don't want the blade to catch on the edge of the felt or anything in case it's just not stuck down as well as it should be. So I'm just gonna pull it away from the edge just a little bit, but you can place it anywhere on the mat you want. And then you're going to click go. Once you click go, you're going to come to this screen and it's going to detect your machine. And you may wonder sometimes you have, if you have multiple machines or have used different machines and gotten a new one, it keeps listing all those machines up here. That's because you've still got them connected. If you just go up to your Bluetooth settings and remove those, um, it, it will no longer show that. I used to have three or four machines come up here and I just, now I just removed it so that the only one this particular computer is reading is this one. So I don't have to make those choices. You're going to set your dial on the Cricut to custom. And then you're going to scroll down here and go to the F's and you see you have felt with backing or felt comma wool. I tried both of these settings. I didn't really notice a difference. So I, I'm just gonna use the felt with backing setting. Now we're going to load the felt on the mat as I showed earlier. You're going to cut this out and meet me in my craft room and I'm gonna show you how to put this together. You're not gonna believe how easy this is. Okay, so we've cut this out and you are not going to believe how well this cuts. Look how clean that is. And save this, cause you can reuse these. And this is why I said you need the spatula, just because you don't want to risk misshaping it, pulling it off the mat but look how clean and nice those cut out. I was shocked. All right, so from here, we need a piece of, and this is just a leg cut off of a piece of pantyhose. See, there's the foot. And all you're going to do is, and this doesn't have to be fancy whatsoever. You're going to cut off about a inch and a half strip. That's it. Okay, now what you're going to do is pull it and it's going to curl up on itself. See that? 
All right, now I have a bowl here and I just find it easier to do it this way, but totally any way you want to do it. You don't have to put it on anything, but I just like to have it stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to put the elastic around the bowl, okay? Okay, so now we have our bow pieces and our glue guns heated up. And I'm just going to put a little dollop of glue right here on the shiny side of the felt. This is the good side, this is the shiny side. And I'm going to put that down. And I just like to use a toothpick just because I have burnt myself more than once. Let that set for a second. Take this piece, shiny side up, facing you, this is the shiny side, and I'm gonna put that right down on the center. So when I turn it over, I got a little bit of glue there, which is, pull that off. So when I turn it up, both the good side of the bottom part of the bow and the top of the bow is facing up. All right, now I'm going to, while the bow is facing up, put just a little dollop of glue there. And the less you use, the better. And I'm going to take this piece and just center it over the top. Just like that. So all of our good side of the felt is facing up. The adhesive side is down. All right, now we're going to take our bow and our elastic and line them up just like this. And I like to kind of pull it taunt. Okay, and now I'm just going to put a little dollop of glue on that side that is slightly narrow. And fold that down and hold it. All right, and then do the same on this side. A little dollop of glue, fold it over, and hold it. And there you have it. Cutest hair bows ever. And they're super soft, they don't leave marks on baby's head. Oh, and you can also get a little more creative. Um, that was just the hair bow. I also cut these out of felt. And this was just a felt flower that I found in Design Space. Again, I backed it, put it on my mat and cut it out. It was a two layered flower. And then I just hot glued a button on the top. So you could also put that on a bow, make a super cute hair bow. You could also, instead of using the hose, if you don't like that, um, I bought some super cute lace at Joann's. It's an elastic stretch lace. So you could use those. You could just use plain elastic. So lots of variations. You can see um, I made tons of these bows. Ashley tried them on Evie. She said they were perfect. They're the perfect size. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and I hope to see you back soon. Bye!